intro. Hey guys, this is Megan, been a while. I am here to bring you my review of Star Wars Clone Wars season one. Yes, it's been out forever. Yes, I'm way behind the times, but I'm totally gonna review it anyway, cause it's fun. So here we go. The lens through which I'm seeing this just to open, I have not seen Star Wars episode three, the movie, but I have seen one, two, four, five, and six, and a few others. So I know where Anakin's story begins and where it ends, character by character. First, Ahsoka. I have heard a lot about this character before I'd seen the show at all. Apparently she's a fan favorite. As of season one, I don't understand why. She's not bad, but she's nothing to write home about. Don't judge me. I think they need to age her. I know they started very young. I know this, but I still artistically would have preferred her to be a little bit older for what she was doing. Tell us what we want to know right now or I will gut you like a Rokarian dirt fish. I really wish she dropped the sky guy thing because that's kind of annoying. The outfit, you're gonna go save the galaxy in that, like really? I mean, also she's supposed to be kind of a child, like isn't- does anybody else think this is a, this outfit for her is a little bit on the weird side? However, I see potential in the character. I like the way she runs with her lightsaber, it's different, it was creative. Whoever came up with that, that was good. And I think the general idea for the character was good. What I like about the voice actress is that I could see the progression. Like, I feel like she started as kind of just okay, and then she was getting a little better as the season goes on. So we'll see where the voice acting goes in season two. I think it was improving through season one, so it should be interesting to see what happens there. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi in the prequel series is actually one of my favorites. I really like the way Ian McGregor plays him. I think he brings a warmth and a charm that I didn't really see in episodes four, five, and six. I feel a little bit of a traitor because I feel like those are the good Star Wars movies, the real Star Wars movies. I really like those, but honestly, Obi-Wan never did much for me. So it was interesting to see how did the show portray this guy. I think they did a decent job portraying him overall. My one main criticism actually is just in the voice acting. The actor was able to accomplish about one good tone for Obi-Wan and then that's kind of all he exercised the entire way through. I think if they were drowning somewhere he'd still sound like this. Anakin, don't you think it's time that we try to save our lives? Anakin, don't you think it's interesting that the self-destruct is going off in three seconds and we are still here? Anakin, isn't it fascinating that we're plunging to our doom? A little more emotional range would be good. Other than that, I, I think the character is being well handled overall. I am told that this series is like a bridge for Anakin between episode 2 and episode 3. That it explains in a way that episode 3 didn't Anakin's fall from the light side to the dark side. I hated the character of Anakin in episode 2. Episode 1 I didn't mind, honestly. Episode 2 I thought he was a creep from the very beginning of the movie. I saw the movie and I was like People talk about the arc from good guy to bad guy. I saw no arc. He was an automatic creep from the very beginning of the movie. And he goes and he commits like this mass murder thing. They're dead. Every single one of them. And not just the men. But the women. And the children, too. I know what happened to him is horrible, but it can't justify what he did. And I slaughtered them like animals. Whenever I bring that up, I feel like people are like, oh, watch the Clone Wars, it explains everything. As of season one, I have seen no explanation. They did not explain Anakin. They gave him a personality transplant, which was a, the proper creative decision, because if you made him the creep we see in episode two... You are in my very soul. Torment the show would be insufferable. So the overall decision was a good one, but I would say that it was still completely separate. This is a different character. This is not who I saw in episode two. It's all Obi-Wan's fault. He's jealous. He's holding me back. Next point, story on the whole. It seems like a very basic, a very simple story formula. You gotta rescue these people, have to take this base, have to whatever it is, you gotta do and it's a very basic story structure which doesn't bother me on the whole i think it's you know it holds my attention well enough it's not fascinating there are no awesome episodes there are no episodes where you're just like oh, what'll happen next 
it's not an awesome show, but it's good enough that I would think, you know, this is just season one. Every show has season one, the season that you just kind of want to brush under the carpet and forget. Keyword of my review on this season one in general. Potential. That's what it has. We'll see what they do with it. Is this a kid's show or is it not? I think I'm going to settle on no, it is not a kid's show. Just the sheer number of clones that they off and then the way in which a couple of the characters die, it just seems a little bit... I mean, I don't want to exaggerate. This isn't like an R-rated movie or anything. It's not like there's blood everywhere. For my sensitivities, it can be a little much sometimes. Like, it's a clip or two here and there that they sprinkle in that's like, that was so unnecessary. I know that the evil guys are evil. I didn't need to see that. Another writing pet peeve. If you feel like you have to show your audience that to be, to, to convince the audience that your character is evil, maybe the character needs a little work. Best characters, you do not need to see them do anything like that. They just have that aura, like Mother Gothel. Tangle, that's the way to do it. Toby believed she would off somebody without actually having to see her do it. You just believed she could, and then she tried to, and no one was surprised. Animation, okay. As far as the movements, the animation leaves a lot to be desired. So the animation doesn't really carry the emotion of the show. Animation is supposed to further the emotional experience. This animation does not add anything. They came up with one expression and then they give them about this much emotional range on that one expression. So everybody's basically making the same face through the whole first season. That's what I feel like. And there's not much as far as movements and everything like that goes. It's, it's all very stiff and the animation just seems very cheap. Uh, it's not the biggest thing in the world. It's not the biggest deal. I think story is way more important than technology. And if you only have a certain amount of money, spend it on the story every day of the week. Spend it on the writers, the, the actors, the music guys. Better that the technology suffer than the story suffer. Irritation. I'm gonna go over some of the irritating things that I noticed in this show because no matter how good you are, every show is gonna have something that's irritating. So we're going to talk about it. First one, every Star Wars fan knows what I am about to say. It is something that haunts their every step, their every dream. And it is something that George Lucas just seemed to love. Jar Jar Binks messed up every episode he was in. He actually bothered me more here than he did in Star Wars Episode One. Episode One, he was not that bad. He was kind of annoying now and again, but he wasn't that bad, honestly. I think the hatred is a little overdone for him, but it, in the show, like I felt like they didn't know what they wanted him to be. They had to make mistakes that I felt like, do you realize what he just did? He makes a silly mistake that results in people dying. And it's almost played off like, I feel like writers, do you realize that this horrible, horrible thing happened from that little clumsy gag of yours? It puts kind of a dark shadow on all of this clumsiness and I, and I don't even understand it. It's illogical. You look at the way he behaves and you look at the fact that the good guys are sending him to these very sensitive political situations. Like, why are you sending the klutz whose mistakes kill people? Like, regularly. And then I had this one episode where I thought maybe they were trying to make up for it and he did one or two things that are smart, but I, I it, it just didn't, it didn't mesh. It didn't make sense. It didn't roll together. They needed to just drop him because he was not working. Pacifism, the pacifism thing. I don't understand it, especially since it seems like the writing is kind of on the side of the pacifists. But at the same time, the whole show is centered around people who are not pacifists. They are saving the galaxy by virtue of what comes from being not pacifist. And then they're gonna talk about how they should be pacifist. You know that whole protecting the innocent thing we were just doing? It's like there's only been one or two episodes on this, but I feel like the pacifists, they just seem so ungrateful. The Jedi's are, Jedi are like, oh, we saved your life. We totally could have died, but we did it because it's right. We saved your life. And the other people are like, oh, at what cost? Maybe it would have been better if we'd been dead. It's easy to talk about how war is bad when someone else is willing to fight the war for you. We thought we knew nerds what red shirt meant because we see Star Trek. Guys, you do not know what red shirt means until you watch the Clone Wars. They will bring in 30 people to do the most absurd thing and they'll kill off, what, 28 of them routinely? 
honestly, it's annoying. It's annoying because I feel I, I feel sorry for the characters that are constantly getting offed. But also, it annoys me as a storyteller because I feel like it's completely unnecessary. It doesn't help if you think this is going to concern the audience more for the main characters, which I've heard a lot of. I, I've heard a lot of writing advice that says that you know, off a side character, so the audience is worried about the main character. I've never seen this work. Have you ever seen? Ensign Smith go with McCoy and then when Ensign Smith gets knocked off did you ever worry that McCoy wasn't going to come back from the away mission? No. So in the end, how would I describe this show? I would put potential on it. It's not amazing, it's not awesome, but it caught my attention enough that I would see the next season even without the Star Wars label. I think that it's for the shot, see where it goes. And I felt like there were some things that I saw improve as they went on and maybe it would get even better in the next season. I think that they've established a good character base, they've established a good premise, and they just need to, need to run with it. I'm very interested in seeing where this goes next and I hope you are interested in seeing my next video about it. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you next time. And if you wouldn't mind, leave me a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts on season one of this show, Clone Wars. It's late, I have to get up at six in the morning, so, and I'm filming a video, so, you know, good life decisions. See you next time, guys.